I'm Ray Parati, and I'm an associate professor in ecology and evolutionary biology. And I teach courses that are mainly upper division, although students who are in, you know, their first or second years that are interested in them, you know, are certainly welcome. Uh, that's a really interesting one. This is, this, it was kind of chosen for me because when I was growing up in New Mexico and, you know, I was, I was surrounded by indigenous people and the, their relationships with the natural world really struck me and connected to me. And, uh, when, so I basically, my whole life, I aimed myself towards a career that was oriented at working with and examining and learning about nature. My favorite class to teach is probably evolutionary ecology, which I regard as being at the, the root of everything that I do. And also it's, uh, we're, we're proposing it as a, one of the classes to fulfill the senior requirement. And so, you know, that, that's a class I'm very fond of. And it really links the, the theme, all the themes of our department together in one class. Most of the classes in the department have elements of, of the different themes, but this one specifically is directed at uh, focusing on the relationship between evolution and ecology and, to a certain extent, behavior. Well, I think we're very, very strong in plant biology. <laughs> And so the you know a lot of a lot of departments, including some I've been part of associated with in the past, were either zoology departments or were sort of linked towards zoology. We have the the biodiversity center, which deals with zoology from an evolutionary perspective. Well, I have two research foci. One is looking at the evolution of uh, monogamy, that is pair bonds between males and females in animals and how this relates to their, the, the, them, it, it makes them different than other species that, that are, you know, either polygonous or uh, might be described in some cases as promiscuous. But I look at the, at the basis of social bonds and how they uh, impact ecology and also change the way in which different species evolve. The other uh, aspect of my focus is looking at the uh, the scientific basis and scientific links of indigenous knowledge with Western science. And so I teach a couple of classes also that focus specifically on uh, native peoples or indigenous peoples around the world and their relationships and their, the way they deal with science and uh, environmental issues and things like that. Most of the students who work with me are interested in doing uh, animal behavior and especially in the field. And that's not the easiest thing to do in Kansas. So I've, I've taken to guiding students to finding opportunities that they not normally might not have otherwise thought about. Like I've had a number of students do their senior projects or their honors theses on studying animals in captivity, especially in the uh, Kansas City Zoo. And I've also then had people who were looking at various domestic animals and their social behavior, like dogs, cats, cattle, goats, you know, things that you can actually observe because most wildlife in Kansas is pretty shy of being observed by humans. So it's not really available for students who are, you know, trying to start a project. If you had three or four years to develop a project, you might be able to work something out. But, but when students come to me usually in their junior year and they want to do research, it's easiest to find something that they can actually get an abundance of data on in a relatively short period of time. And so I try to guide them through that process, teaching them how to uh, collect behavioral data, teaching them how to think about the relationships and the social bonds between the different types of, of whatever species they're looking at. 
and also then to uh, so quite often I will go into the field with them, especially early on, just to sort of show them the way that some of these things are done and allow them to sort of then develop their own ideas and their own things about what they want to do with it. And sometimes they end up doing things fairly different than they thought they were doing when they started out. And that actually works out very well. Well, there, there are two things. I, I sometimes have students who are interested in exploring a topic, especially in evolution or evolutionary ecology, and they will actually do uh, library research and read a breadth of papers that they would not normally have an opportunity to read, and then try to synthesize those into a specific theme. The other aspect is the working with the uh, with with various animals in when you have the opportunity to observe them. Now, Deb Smith does a really good job with this with bees, so I kind of leave that area to her, but. <laughs> But uh, if people really want to look at animals, and, and one thing I need, think students need to realize, and this is one thing I often have to convince my students of, is that uh, studying domestic animals is not as dull as they might think it is. That quite often the, these are animals that have chosen or have been chosen by humans to live with us. And so there's a lot of interesting adaptations that they show to the way that they accommodate their lives to dealing with humans on a regular basis. I, I used to be a, an athlete when I was in college, so I also watch a lot of sport, watch a fair bit of sports on TV. So that's sort of an obsession that my wife is not fond of, but it's still part of me. My, my favorite place used to be the Haskell Wetlands, but they don't exist in the form that they did when I first became familiar with them. When I first came to, to KU, one of the things that uh, the administration wanted me to do was build bridges to Haskell and start teaching classes that could be offered at both Haskell and KU. And because of that relationship, I became really aware of and connected to the Haskell Wetlands so I used to spend a lot of time down there. That, that was a very good place to take students, especially if they wanted to do observations or do research. But again, that opportunity sort of faded with the, the building of the traffic way. We fought it off for a long time, but in the long run, it, the forces overwhelmed us, shall we say. <laughs> uh, my favorite class as an undergrad, which was, was animal behavior which was one of the courses I took at, when I was an undergraduate at the University of California, Santa Cruz, that actually showed me that it was possible to uh, develop a career and have a life doing the sort of thing I'd always hoped I could do. One of my goals in, in, in my life has been to get more Native students into science. And so I've, I've been able to achieve that reasonably well through my time at KU. I got support from the National Science Foundation early on to mentor native students in, in ecology and environmental biology. And that really helped me. And the, the, one of the things that's really important to me is that when I work with students, I often learn as much or more from them than they do from me. And to me, that's, that's a really key aspect of education.